We'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth here at City Hall on Saturday, June 5th, with the one and only councilman from East Baltimore. Mr. Carl Stokes, how are you, sir? I'm great, Donnie. How are you doing today? Good, good. A With a $121 million deficit, there's a campaign going on to put four cents on bottles. Right. Bottles of soda, bottles of beer. Uh, your thoughts? My thoughts is that we can't look at it just as a, as a container tax, but you know we have a $121 million projected deficit going into next year. And uh, so we have to figure out a way to come up with at least $41 million worth of revenue, new revenue, new taxes, new fees, uh, to, so that we keep police, we keep fire stations open, we keep rec and parks, meaning the rec centers and the uh, waiting pools and the, uh, the swimming pools open, and that we keep bulk trash going on in the city. So we have cobbled together uh, the mayor has cobbled together a series of fees, including a big one, the bottle tax. That's like a quarter of it, 25% of it all, would be the bottle tax. So if my colleagues and I and the council can figure out something else uh, to make that $41 million disappear, we'll do that. But as far as this councilman is concerned, if we don't find that fee, that a number rather, I will support a bottle tax uh, to make sure that fire police uh, remain on the jobs, to remain that uh, recreation centers remain open, pools remain open, bulk trash get picked up. Hmm. Uh, any opposition? Uh, plenty of opposition. Right now, if we were to vote on it today, the, uh, the container tax would probably fail, frankly. Uh, but then what happens? Then who's going to pay for fire, police, uh, recreation centers? We know fire and police are going to be taken care of because the mayor said that. The mayor also said, though, that she would be supportive of rec centers remaining open uh, if we could find more money. So the bottom line is, is uh, Donnie, is that we have to come up with a number of dollars to keep our rec centers open, to keep our pools open, uh, to keep bulk trash being picked up. Um, and so we're going to do that. I'm, I'm actually confident that the council will work this out in the next 10 days, two weeks. You know, I'm going to get a, a tad philosophical here. When I think back to the Maryland General Assembly and I interviewed uh, Delegate Talmadge Branch, he's on House Appropriations, and sure. he said one of the uh, good things that happened in this year's General Assembly is that we didn't lose as much as other jurisdictions. But I'm also reminded that uh, when the new mayor came in, uh, I don't even think she was official yet, but she uh, made her way to see the president, Barack Obama, who sure. came to Baltimore and he was just over there, right over That's there right. At, at War Memorial Plaza. And, I, and I'm thinking about uh, from the Senate, from the Senate level, uh, the federal Senate, that is, federal level, that uh, people like Barbara Mikulski, uh, who's uh, on the Appropriations Committee. Yeah, she's on the Appropriations Committee. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering, from a philosophical standpoint, we can find money for an Iraq war, for other things. Sure. Uh, you think anybody has $121 million so we don't have to go through this type of mental exercise? An hour in Afghanistan or Iraq is $121 million. One hour. Now, I can't tell you that's absolutely the number, Donnie, but you know, $121 million to feed a war. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you work hard. You right. work hard, you're trying to get legislation passed, and I'm just looking around the city. Uh, the fire pension, right. fire department's pension, absolutely. Baltimore City Police Department's pension, we're closing schools, sure. we're closing rec centers. Right. I, I don't, it's, it's, I'm wondering where the humanity is in government. You're right. I mean, there, there shouldn't be a time in city government, particularly in a city like Baltimore, which has done pretty good with its resources. I, I, I got to say that about uh, city government. It has done a pretty good job with the resources it has. And it tries to do so much, whether it's health care, uh, we could do better by uh, supporting HIV and AIDS, of course, in this town. But it has done so well. Uh, school clinics are, are operating in this town. It certainly seems in a downtime economically, this won't last forever, maybe another year, maybe another two years, but in a downtime economically that the federal government should try its best best to keep its cities whole, uh, keep its cities safe, uh, keep the young people off the streets and into uh, great things culturally and academically. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm even thinking, Councilman, as, as, as uh, we, we did bailouts, corporate bailouts, and, and I, I remember CEOs back during, uh, you know, when, when the recession was very bad and entities like Merrill Lynch 
were closing. These CEOs were falling out of the air with golden parachutes, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they were uh, 100 million, 200 million dollar, 300 million dollar golden parachutes and packages that these CEOs have. And, and this is a city, right? You You're know, right. 650,000 people, 121 million bucks, and I don't have 121 million bucks right now, but but. You make a great point, Donnie, because when the federal government piled billions, not millions, billions into an AIG, a Goldman Sachs, you know what they did with that money? They stole more money. They took higher golden parachutes. They uh, gathered up at fire sales other entities that were closing. They did not give that money back. They did not stop foreclosing on mortgages to people. They did not bail out the average citizen. They stole more money. And so that money should rightly be going to cities like Baltimore that has a population uh, that is greatly impoverished, uh, that have young people in schools that uh, don't work for a myriad of reasons, and helping to support our cities. But does it send a message to the people when and I'm not putting East Baltimore in you, but with, with two new prisons slated yeah. for East Baltimore. East Baltimore, and, right. But we're closing schools and, and shortening rec hours and you know, saying the, the swimming pool hours aren't going to be open. I, I don't know. It's just, doesn't it? Some, something smells fishy. Well, it is fishy. And, uh, and, and good government and good citizenry now, remember, there are times when people show up in Annapolis and show up in Washington, D.C. by themselves. I'm not putting it all on the citizens, but I'm, I guess I'm saying together we got to walk, because you know how often a lone public official can stand up and say, we've got to do this for schools, and we've got to do this for children, and when they look behind them, there's nobody standing with them. I'm, I'm not saying that people have to be there every time, but, but the squeaky wheel does get the oil. People like Glenn Middleton of AFSCME are concerned that we're going to lose 600 jobs of, of low-level employees. Not middle management, not upper-level management, right. uh, but low-level. Not the six to nine levels above low, low right. level, you know, right. low level. Yeah, and, and I saw a, 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 Baltimore City people. a grid yesterday of city employees in, I think, DPW, where 240 low-level jobs would be lost, 240, and 20 managers' uh, jobs would be lost. It's just an unfair uh, situation, obviously, but more than that, let me just say also, uh, besides the unfair uh, piece of that, uh, on, a, on a, quote, good side is that 600 jobs are not going to be lost in the city because in the next 10 days the Baltimore City Council is going to pass legislation that will bring in another 40 to 50 million dollars and I think we're still going to lose about 250 positions but we're not going to lose 600 jobs I guarantee you that of uh, all the few things I can guarantee in politics I can tell you that we will not lose 600 uh, jobs uh, before June 30th. Good deal. Thank you for your time Councilman. Thank you sir. The one and only Carl Stokes representing what's your district? 12th district 12th sir. district yes sir former district for uh, the council president russell watts good deal yes. keep watching bemorenews.com the news before the news where we uncover the truth